down, protects the receiver, and creates a really nice play. Here's third and seven in the red zone. A lot of young quarterbacks will hold it so their guys can get their feet in the paint. This particular case, not, not going to happen. He sees the read key, turn his back, play man-to-man -man with the tight end. Boom, I'll take it underneath, let my receiver do the damage. He makes me right by getting over the top for the touchdown and the conversion. I love this. How about the pressure off the left-hand side? He sees it, feels it, attacks the line of scrimmage, north and south, and yet all the defenders start to collapse just a little bit, and somehow, out of the peripheral vision of his right eye, he feels that there's nobody underneath the receiver. So the left-handed quarterback throwing it that way, very easy throw for him, but the threat of him escaping north and south and creating that quarterback run conflict is what allowed those defenders to collapse and to allow the receiver to uncover. The instincts, that's what makes him an incredibly special player. And man, did he display those instincts throughout the course of what was a great win on the road at Arizona. Absolutely. That's really well done. Marcus, I feel like we spent all summer, you and I, or, 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 or the spring, I should say, leading up to the draft, talking about Tua. What did you see from the first game where he really took over? Gee, poise, man. Listen, this was a dude in the second game of his career. I think people forget that. And look, you know, I was screaming, beating the table, start him if he's healthy, get him going early. And I, I still, like, even if Ryan Fitzpatrick was playing great. Don't get me wrong. But I wonder if this team would have one or two more wins if Tua was playing, if we, know, if we knew he would play like this. But also, th this team is galvanized. You see the energy that he's bringing to, to Greg's point, not only to this offense, but the defensive side of the football. Flores is taking chances. He has a quarterback now that is pinpoint accurate. It reminded us a lot about what he was at Alabama. But more than that, just poise, like a, a, a touchdown on a drive he needed and then getting in the field goal range at the end. That's the type of stuff that you draft a guy fifth overall for. And that's what Miami was looking for Tua to do. And so they're a nice playoff position. And Graziano, you were, I were talking before. You look at the schedule. They may do more than that. Look, I was talking about this weeks ago, right? And before they made the quarterback switch. And Jeff Saturday's like, Graz is high, right? <laughs> but no, they can win this division, right? Their next four <laughs> games are against the Chargers, Broncos, Jets, and Bengals. Buffalo's next four games are against the Cardinals, Chargers, 49ers, and Steelers. These two teams play each other in week 17. It's entirely possible, yes, that the Miami Dolphins could be in first place or at the very least tied with a chance to win the AFC East come week 17. Yeah, I, there's no way anyone could look at you right now and say that you're high based on that opinion. He would do uh, we will take a quick break <laughs> as we continue. Tom Brady wanted him. Bruce Arians didn't. Did adding Antonio Brown cause more of a mess than it was worth? We'll answer that question and more as we continue. You're watching Get Up on ESPN. Say you're looking for the perfect.